ahead and get started. All I right. am so excited today too. Um, for this fireside chat with Mrs. Ashlea Chisley of <laughs> Simplistic Touch LLC. Now, Ashley is the founder of Simplistic Touch. Um, and funny story, Ashley and I actually grew up together in church. <laughs> so um, <Small> we <laughs> grew up together in church you know how you lose touch. And then um, as I was looking for services for to assist with organization of my home and just to help me to declutter, um, just that accountability that I know that I needed, um, I came back in touch with Ashley <laughs> and it has been an absolute joy working together. We are still working together yes. as organization is an ongoing journey. But Ashley, I just want to first um, give you the opportunity to introduce yourself, tell the people who you are, tell them about your business, why you started Simplistic Touch. Let's just dive right in. All righty. So, of course, I'm Ashley. Um, it feels so weird to say founder because I'm still new to this. So I started my business officially in August of last year, um, but I have been organizing for four plus years prior to that with doing um, friends, family, myself. <laughs> um, and the reason really why I started Simplistic Touch was I felt like growing up, well, my grandparents, they raised me and I felt like they just gave me such an awesome foundation with um, humility and helping people. And that just gives me like so much joy to be able to do that for people because the world that we're living in, as you know, it's like always something going on. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be able to come into people's lives and find a way to assist them in any way that I possibly can. And the way that I love to do that is by helping them get organized. So I go into their homes or their businesses, whatever the case may be, and I'm creating functional systems so that they can have a stress-free environment. When they go into their home or their business, they're not looking for things. They know exactly what they're looking for. Their productivity is increasing. As I stated before, they're stress-free and they're able to just focus more on things that matter more. You know what I mean? Um, yes. Wow. Make, the, make their life just be able to just function better. So uh, that that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's I mean, why I started Simplistic Touch. Listen, we are starting out guns <laughs> blazing. Okay, let me tell you <laughs> you hit so many key points about what organization does for people reduces mm -hmm. stress increases productivity mm -hmm. but I want to go back a little bit I want yeah. to know what and this is one of my curveball questions okay you will share with us the reason behind the name simplistic touch and how did you why how did you come about naming your business yes good question so honestly i had a lot of different business names um some of them were uh i had to really think about something that wasn't going to offend people and that was hard for me because of course you want to come up with something catchy and um my initial uh name was uh what was it? Mess, mess to yes. And I was like, well, I don't want people to feel like I'm calling them messy, you know, because we all got a little mess in our lives. So I'm like, how can I make this, <laughs> make this sound a little bit more professional and not like I'm beating somebody up. And really, honestly, when I think about organizing, I'm thinking about keeping it as simple as possible. You yeah. know, it's easy to 
uh, be grand and think about all of the different entities that you can break things down into. But I feel like sometimes when you try to do too much, it can complicate things. So I felt like being able to have just a couple bins in here would make even the world difference in somebody's closet compared to um, not having a bin or a container. You know what I mean? So I tried to keep it simple. <laughs> so that's where that came from. Yes. I <laughs> love it. So I <laughs> love it. Listen, some years ago, I interned in New York um, yeah. at an organization and their model, their whole tagline was simple is smart. Mm. And ever since then, I have been a huge fan of simplicity. Yes. Um, just keeping it simple, right? Yeah. Um, which is kind of crazy for me to say because I am an overthinker by nature. <laughs> Like me I too. overthink a thing yes. and overthink yes. a thing. Okay. Yes. But um I love the peace and the ease that simplicity brings. So I thank wanted you. to just start off by asking you that. Question. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. So um let's talk about, let me see. You you touched a little bit on it, but can you dive a little bit deeper into um, why organization is critical to um, you know an entrepreneur to the whole idea of self improvement, right? Yes. You think um, you know you talked about reducing stress. Mm -hmm. um, maybe provide some examples or or um, experiences that you have had that have shown, you know, before and after of mm -hmm. just that peace and that calm that comes about when one is organized. Absolutely. So um, I feel that being organized is um, an absolute thing when it comes to self-improvement, because when I think about self-improvement, I think about the overall well-being of somebody and how we can just better ourselves, right? So when you have clutter in your life, it kind of weighs you down a little bit. So think about when you walk into um, a room and let's say office desk, for instance, it is scattered with paperwork, right? And you have this portfolio that you have to get done, but you have no idea where this portfolio paperwork is. So you are going and scattering through all this stuff like, okay, I got to meet this deadline. But if you have some, um, I wish I actually had one in here with me right now, but I don't, but they have those um, paper dividers. Mm -hmm. Having that on your desk with um, a simple label that says, tax paperwork or projects or to-do list or whatever have be, just having something in visual sight um, because I feel like when things are out of sight, it becomes out of mind yeah. a lot of times. So I feel like when you have something um, broken down into sections and kind of categorize not only your uh, items that you have to do, but also um, just material things also, then yes. that just gives you the freedom to be able to just flow a little bit more easily. So like, for instance, when my husband and I, we bought our house, um, <laughs> he was so upset with me because we went on our honeymoon the day after our wedding. And when we came back, it, we were gone for a week and we, we had just moved to our house. And so there were boxes everywhere. And he's like, so you're getting ready to like unpack this whole house. Like when we just got back from vacation, I'm like, yeah, because we just got back from vacation and I can't live like this. Like how I'm just going to come in and see boxes all the time. Like th this don't stress you out. Like <laughs> look, my boy's getting high. I'm getting anxiety, <laughs> you know? So I had to like buckle down, sit down. And I actually wrote out and prioritize what I wanted to do first yes. and basically went through that list one by one and got it done within the weekend and I and I felt so much better my husband's like I just cannot believe that you did that I said <laughs> but don't you feel so much don't you just feel like you can just breathe more easily now like oh my gosh it's so free <laughs> Okay, what a way to walk into uh, being a newlywed, right? <laughs> right. 
like sit down sometimes. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. I'm not gonna be able to sit down. That is too funny. So did he agree though? Did he feel much better? He did. He did so much so that he then asked me to organize his music studio down in the basement. And can you believe that that man has had it organized since? Like I have not had to go down there and tidy up nothing. I am like surprised. Come on. Yes. Yes. I was like, look at you, babe. Can I do that? (laughs) That is awesome. Yes, see, that, that is feel a, so that, good. Anything yes. to take down more, you know, less stress for me and doing stuff in the house, you know, hey, because it take a teamwork, you know what I yes. mean? So as long yes. as everybody is buying in, that definitely helps. Yes, that's awesome. Well, that is a key point as well, because when you think about systems, mm-hmm. I kind of view it as maybe two buckets, right? So some people don't know how to develop the system and they need help to develop the system. Right. And once you get the system developed for them, they can follow it to a T. Right. But sometimes there are others who say you even have a system developed, but it's not being followed. Yes. This is kind of a setup for my next question. How important do you think discipline is when it comes to being organized, having systems in place, and overall self-improvement? How important is discipline when it comes to that? It is hand in hand because I feel like that it starts on the inside and it starts with your mindset. So think about when you trying to do something over and over again, and you're not getting a different result, you're getting the same thing and you're not happy with that. Then it's like, okay, well, what can I do differently to make this work? Something that I also do with my clients too, is I think accountability is very important. Um, And what I call with those type of clients, with those type of clients is my maintenance clients. Um, Because I go back and follow up through with them because sometimes you create a system and things in that person's life may have altered. So maybe initially they didn't have any kids and now they have twins. And so now they need to change and reorganize maybe a spare bedroom that they had and change that into a nursery. So then we're revamping that whole um, system, functioning system that we created for the spare bedroom or backstock room. And now it's going to create, it's going to be a nursery. So now we have to revamp that and create systems for that nursery, for that new, uh, lifestyle that's going to be in that, in that, in that space. Um, so I think that accountability and, it is, is, is hand in hand. And it really starts with the mindset because if you keep doing the same thing and, not getting a different result. It's almost like insanity. So, you know, um, trying to find new measures to better yourself. It's all about self-improvement and and that's, it's all hand in hand. in my, in my point. Yep. That's a common quote, right? They say insanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting different results. Yes. So yes, the discipline and the accountability go hand in hand. I yes. love that. So pers- a quick personal plug and testimony. So I already shared that Ashley and I came together after I was fi- looking for someone to right. assist me and getting my life, right? Getting organized. Mm-hmm. And this, as you talk about the system, like the system that you developed for your husband, one of just one of the systems that you developed for me, and this was just kind of like a duct tape system really Mm. to help me get my paperwork under control. Mm -hmm. Um, The filing system, just Mm -hmm. simply taking out blank files, naming them accordingly. And for me, it was really a mind shift thing, right? So it took the pressure off of me to say, okay, you don't have to shred this right now, or you don't have right. to decide where this goes right now. Right. There's a place for it, right? Right. So we're just going to sit it right here for now. That way it can get out of the way and continue doing that for right. like, all of the other things. Right. And then go back. So um, I love that, that step approach. So yes. that's excellent. I just had to, yes. to plug plug your business there (laughs) like wow just something so simple so simple I know yeah 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 profound so yes 
Um, okay, so let's shift a little bit and talk okay. about your personal um, your personal journey as an entrepreneur, right? Okay. So what are some of the lessons that being an entrepreneur has taught you? What are some lessons that being an entrepreneur has taught you? So as you stated earlier, um, I am the same way as far as overanalyzing things. Um, and I tend to like to be in control. <laughs> you see how hard that was for me to say that? <laughs> um, <laughs> So because, <laughs> right, because of that, um, I have learned as an entrepreneur, and this would be advice that I would give also to other entrepreneurs too, is not to fixate on things out of your control, because it can be so easy to get wrapped up in what isn't going right, or the what ifs, or the what maybes. So try not to get fixated on things out of your control. It always expect the unexpected because there's always going to be something that comes up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then my major thing is to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. I, that has been my biggest thing that I've even been continually to struggle with. Um, so one thing that I uh, kind of, pushed myself to do more was videos. Um, so I joined a video course to get me more familiarized with being on camera. And, you know, people don't believe this, but I'm really a shy person. And I really don't open up until I get to know you. I have this bubbly personality. But if I'm in a room full of people that I don't know, I'm going to be standing on the wall like, oh hi <laughs> how you doing you know but <laughs> and I would be one of those people on the wall with you like hey right. <laughs> how right. you doing Side <laughs> on, trying to get the vibe <laughs> so yes. you know um that has been a really good thing for me to be uncomfortable because I feel like being uncomfortable, you are allowing yourself to learn new things about yourself, about life in general, because we grow and change every day. So, um, and then also be okay with not being everyone's cup of tea. You're not going to be for everyone. And that's okay. Um, to give you an example, I know like everything that's going on with the whole um, vaccine thing. Um, and so, you know, to me, it's, it's a HIPAA violation to ask someone if they're vaccinated. Um, but I did have a client that, or, or a lead that was reaching out to me and I was following up with her and she was like, yeah, I, I really wanted to hire you, but you're not vaccinated. And I was like, oh, I completely understand. You know, it's totally cool. It's your prerogative, just like it's my prerogative. And, you know, um, I, I wish you the best though. And if there's anything, or if I can refer you to anyone um, else, please let me know. And I will do my best to assist you. Um, but, but, it made me feel some type of way a little bit because I'm like, wow, you know, this is really serious. Like um, to not be able to assist someone or someone is judging you based off of your own preference or beliefs or whatever the case may be, you know? So, you know, it's, it, you're going to come across people that's just not your cup of tea and that's okay. Yeah. Um, give yourself freedom to make mistakes and be okay with making those mistakes and learning from them as long as you learn from them. <laughs> yes. And then um, be willing to share and uh, learn your knowledge. And that, that's it. Yeah, I would say those are probably the biggest things because we, we all too often want things to just be. <laughs> just mm -hmm. get to the point and mm -hmm. you got to put in some hard work love sweat and tears yes. when you're an entrepreneur and yes. I'm an entrepreneur but I also have a full-time job and then I care for my grandparents so I'm a jewel of all hats <laughs> so um you 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 have to make the most of your situations and be okay with with sometimes with the hands that you're dealt and and, and make it work <laughs> yes, yes. Yep. wow like so many nuggets so many gems yes. I hope you all are capturing the gems that are being dropped right now <laughs> um just such wisdom right so 
talk to us a little bit about who are some of your role models in life? Like who have, who are the people who have shaped you? Yes. So I would say my number one is honestly my grandparents. I spoke about them in the beginning and honestly, like thinking about them kind of makes me want to tear up a little bit, but the humility that I get is just so emotionally overwhelming. Like um, I was raised by them. I was brought up in the church and, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, spiritual person and I'm very family oriented. That's a big thing for me. Um, I'm big on healthy relationships with people yeah. um, and being able to talk things out and, you know, move past. Cause I think a lot of times that's, that's a problem. We, we assume a lot and rather than having those tough conversations because yeah. of not wanting to be uncomfortable. Yeah. And that, I think that's a big problem. Um, and just on another topic in today's world, but yes. So, um, my grandparents, yes, they have raised me so well and being, being partial caretakers for them right now has just humbled me so much. And just, it makes me kind of, even though I'm tired, <laughs> Yeah. It actually makes me hungrier to get out there. It makes me more driven to yeah. do all that I can do. Yeah. And um, I'm just thankful to have the opportunity every day to make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah. Um, a lot of friends and families have started their businesses despite personal things that are going on in their life, including myself. So the, the overcoming obstacles and not letting things stop you. Because a lot of times we put an age limit on things. Oh man, I'm about to be such and such. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. Listen, you don't stop living until the Lord take you on home. And I just <laughs> feel like you need to keep on pushing through until the very end. Okay. <laughs> Fight every day. <laughs> they keep all pushing, baby. Yes. <laughs> you already gave such bomb advice for someone be interested in becoming an entrepreneur. I mean, oh my goodness. <laughs> Just those nuggets that you shared. Um, you talked about your role models. Um, what are some questions that you ask yourself when you are embarking on something new? Are there certain questions that go through your mind? Like, just, yeah. just walk us through your process as an organizational guru, systems guru. What are some questions that you ask yourself? How much time you got? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. So <laughs> as stated before, <laughs> I'm always in my head. So I feel like even when I'm asleep, my mind is just still going and thinking about stuff. Yeah. Um, but I would have to say the, the bigger ones is, can I do this? And then how invested am I? Mm. Like, how bad do I want it? Mm. How, because knowing how invested I am in it will tell me how much work and effort I'm going to put into it. Because if I'm not really into something, I'm probably going to half ass it mm. or, you know, be like, oh, I'm going to procrastinate a little bit more if I don't really want to do something. Mm. So that kind of goes back to like retraining your mindset and uh, coming up with new habits, new healthy habits, just like we get up in the morning and we brush our teeth and we bathe and do all of that, eat breakfast, all that, you know, you have to come up with new healthy routines so that you're more familiarized with you know, better things that is going to help you assist throughout the, or progress throughout the day. Yeah. Um, so that's really what I do. I, I, I really ask myself, can I do this? And how invested am I in doing this? Because that just kind of gives me a pinpoint in my mind mentally, like, mm, am I really into this? Am I really going to buckle down and do this? Or is this like, just for a little something I'm just trying to get a little something out of this or whatever so yeah. that's really what I yeah I kind of ask myself that how yes. invested am I yes I absolutely love that I am going to borrow that brilliance for sure um because I am one like as a creative <clears throat> yeah and I'm sure other creatives can relate you are always coming up with new yes. ideas yes not just new ideas good ideas yes. like yes. good ideas right yes. so you have to ask yourself I think that's a critical question to ask yourself 
so that you don't get into a position where you're just jumping into all of these things exactly because they are good ideas and you may be passionate about them right but you also have to be realistic about exactly how much time do you really have to dedicate yep. and invest in it because right. in order to do something well um and this is kind of a segue into another topic or conversation but we live in an instantaneous culture right mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. a lot of times people think that things are supposed to happen overnight and that's yes. unrealistic yep. right yep. so you have all of these ideas that you may want to do but in order to do something well it's going to take right. time exactly to really cultivate it um, to get people aware of what it is yeah. you're doing, yep. to get people to trust you, um, you know, yeah, as right. you maybe reaching and that, out. That's the big thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. that is the big thing. So, um, great question. How invested, how, how willing am I to be invested in that? Right. That is, right. that's awesome. We are going to wrap things up, but I am going to ask you, I have two more questions before okay. we wrap up. Um, and I promise they're easy questions. One, you may have already touched on a little bit, um, but first we're going to ask just in general, what are some parting words that you would leave for entrepreneurs who are looking to really take hold of September as the month of self-improvement? Self um, mm -hmm. What encouragement would you give to entrepreneurs who may be struggling in this area and really want to just improve their lives um wanting to get organized um and they want to they know that they can do it through systems and organizations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just what advice would you give so i'm actually going to share with you um two quotes and i think that that is going to hit those questions really good and then i'll share something else with you so the first quote it says and it's by uh, Bruce Lee. And it says, if you spend too much time thinking about a thing, you'll never get it done. Mm. And I feel like that is so important mm. because it's easy to, yes, continue to make your list, right? But when will you put the time aside to actually do the things on the list? So we can... Think about it all day, <laughs> what we got to do. But that goes back to creating, um, uh, what's the word, uh, healthy habits so that you can continue on with your self-improvement journey. So if that is setting 15 to 20 minutes a day to go to a room and declutter or go to your office and organize some papers, go to the kitchen and throw out things in the cabinets that are no longer good. As long as you are putting that time and energy into what you need to do, you'll be good. It's just, we have to do the work because we get so caught up in, oh, I want this. Oh, I got to do this or yeah. Okay. But what actions are we putting in place to get it done? Mm-hmm. And then another one, it's in regards to organizing, um, and it's by a lady named Christina Scalis, and it says, organization isn't about perfection. It's about efficiency, reducing stress, and cluttering, saving time and money, and improving your overall quality, quality of life. And that literally is like the sum of it all. Um, I feel like when you focus on everything being so perfect, you get caught up in stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, that goes back to allowing yourself, giving yourself freedom to make the mistakes that you need to make so that you can learn from them to better yourself. I love that quote because it's yeah. not about perfection. It's just right. about developing, like you said, those healthy habits that you do on a consistent basis. Exactly. There's another key word, consistency. Consistent, consistency, yes. Yes. Um, so that you can continue to get better over time. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Absolutely love it. Ashley, you have been <laughs> a complete joy. Let me thank you. you. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. <laughs> the last thing I want you to do is just share with the people, how they can get in contact with you, how they can follow you, where they can follow yes. you on social media, 
Share yes. with them all of the details, please. All righty. So it is Simplistic Touch LLC. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. I'm on Yelp, Bing. <laughs> I'm also on um, a platform called Find My Organizer. Um, I have my website at www.simplistictouch.com. So I am all around out here for you. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Listen, um, again, you all, Ashley and I work together. She's been helping me get my life. Use her, contact her um, so that you can get your life in order and get organized <laughs> and be well yes. on your way for yes. self improvement month in September. Yes. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, Thank we'll you. Definitely have to do this again. Yes. Um, it's been a joy. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm the owner of Natural Woman LLC, which houses Natural Woman Magazine, the Natural Woman app, the Natural Woman Fashion Show, pretty much everything Natural Woman. Um, the idea of just the Natural Woman brand came to me when I gave birth to twins in 2012, all natural. A moment that actually it changed my entire life because I was so afraid of that experience that I had to undergo hypnosis to be able to birth them naturally. And after experiencing that, I was like, whoa, women, we can really do anything we put our minds to. It, was, it just gave me so much power as a woman that I said, okay, it's time to take this to a whole nother level. But through birthing them, the idea of starting this magazine was birthed.